All right, everybody. So this is the replacement of a 1991 stock two-bolt steering box on a Ford Bronco. And as you can see, if I reach down here and I get my hand out of the light and I rotate the steering box back and forth, there is not a lot of satisfaction in there. And <laughs> I mean that that thing is not moving the pitman arm at all. That is just straight walking back and forth. And I'll show you what happens if I can keep my flashlight aimed at the pitman arm. It's that is the drag link right there, down there where the light's hitting it. And that should move at least a little bit because I've got both tires off right now and uh, it's not even transferring to the pitman arm or the drag link. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to replace it with this unit over here which is a four bolt unit. You can tell the difference because it's got one, two, three, four bolts on the top of it as opposed to the one in the Bronco which has a two bolt system. This came out of a 1997 F350. So I've read around and it seems like Ford in somewhat of a stroke of genius made the one ton bolt pattern and the half ton bolt pattern the same. So I took the pitman arm, I took the steering box and everything, I cleaned it up and we're going to replace the stock unit in the Bronco. So let's see what happens. Okay everybody, so updates like I promised. The way it sits right now, we've pulled the steering box, hooray! That's the stock steering box from the Bronco and this is the one that I pulled out of the junkyard. Now, there are a couple of small differences. Just so that you all know, the distance between here and here is the same as it is on here and here. So, it's also the same distance from here to here to here to here to here. All of these bolts line up. Now, we did have someone ask a question about whether or not the notch in the frame lines up just like on the stock box with the F350 box. Because these are both cylinders and because of that, there needs to be a small notch in the frame. Now, Ford did put a notch in the frame where all of this bolts up and nice and snug. So, here's the difference. F-350 box. Bronco box. There is, not really, from what I can tell here, a big old difference. They all seem to have the same spacing on the top of the cylinder down to the mounting plate of those bolt, of those threaded holes. However, there is one difference that I will talk about, and that is the difference between the Bronco Pitman arm and the F-350 Pitman arm. The F-350 Pitman arm from the front of the Pitman arm to the center of the bolt is approximately six inches. Now, the distance between the front of the Bronco Pitman arm to the center of that bolt is about six and a half inches. So, Judging by that, I think that this guy came off of a 4x2, and of course we all know that the Broncos are 4x4. However, I'm going to go ahead and leave this on here for two reasons. One, I don't have a pitman arm puller, and two, this is a much thicker pitman arm. Let me show you what I'm talking about. This guy, right here, he's about at his thinnest point. Well, hell, I can't do it and hold the camera at the same time. But it's about an inch and a half. This guy on the Bronco is about an inch and a quarter. So you're looking at a little bit more beef here. Also, another difference, which I don't know if you can tell, is that the drop right here from the bottom of the two bolt is a little bit longer than the drop from the uh, F350 box. However, that's made up for with some extra casting reinforcements right here. So I think that the drop from here to here is about the same and the drop on the 4x2 pitman arm is about a half an inch lower than that. So what we're going to get is a slight difference in alignment which we're going to have to compensate for, but that's okay because I'm replacing all my tie rods anyway in this job. So if you have any more questions, let me know. I'm going to keep working. Something else I forgot to mention in the first update video. Um, this is the, I don't really know what we're going to call it, the slippable rag joint off of the steering column on the 91 Bronco. Now. Inside of this little unit right here, you can kind of see that little flat spot there on the right. 
that flat spot lines up with the flat spot right here on the steering shaft. And wouldn't you know it, the flat spot right here on the F350 box is in exactly the same place. So all we need to do is take the same pitman arm, or I'm sorry, the same rag joint, and it slips right on. Literally, a bolt-on piece of equipment. How cool is that? All right, boys and girls, we're back. And da-da-da-da, look at that. It is bolted in to the truck. Right now, everything's just snugged down. The uh, arm is attached right there, but uh, I think I put it in upside down because, uh, check this out. Yeah, right now my steering wheel's upside down. So, other than that, uh, it's been a successful swap so far. However, I've run into my first snag. And that snag is that this line right here, the high pressure line coming off of the stock Bronco power steering pump has some kind of slightly different flare fitting on it because the return line that goes down to that little loopy cooler thing in front of the cross member uh, hooks up just fine. No play in the uh, fitting. However, once you put all the torque you can down onto the return, uh, the high pressure line, what ends up happening is it uh, still has play in the fitting. So somewhere, somehow, the flare, I think, on the uh, Bronco end is different. Now this corresponds with some other stuff that I've read about, about doing this swap, that the guys who've done it before also had to buy new high pressure hoses. And in this case, I'm gonna be going and getting a high pressure hose from O'Reilly's down the street at my house. Um, I'm gonna get a high pressure hose from a 1997 F350. So, once I get that and I install all of my extra stuff, like the tie rods and the new inner and outer tie rods on this thing, we're going to take it for a ride and see how it works. But as it sits right now, uh, if I go underneath the truck, you can't really see right now, and there's really not a lot of resistance on it. Um, I'll just do this, but it's going to look kind of the same. Even this right now, there's a lot more... Even though it looks like there's play, there's not a lot of fluid in that uh, box, but it uh, it bolts in, guys. There's proof positive. See uh, right down here, all of the uh, bolts that's from the F350. Those are the bolts from the F350. They are the exact same bolts used on the Bronco. And other than a high pressure hose right now, I think that is the only thing stopping me from getting this thing back on the road and bolting all the other parts up. All right, so stay tuned. All right, folks, it's in, and it's bolted up, and we've got the new high-pressure uh, high steering hose from the F350 plumbed in there. I don't know why the hell, but it's got all this extra bend in it. Maybe that's something that matters for the F350. Maybe they have a different location for their lower radiator hose. Who the hell knows? Either way, it fits. It works. Um, Things of note, buy yourself a set of, uh, set of flare wrenches. If you don't, you will hate life. Uh, if you own them, use them, it matters. Things to know also, this small fitting is a half inch fitting and install that first. You're gonna be really upset if you do what I did and install the big one first. Cause the little guy is at this weird position and it's not gonna line up right if you have a set of flare wrenches. The big guy I think is a 5 8 and uh, he'll bolt right onto your stock pump with the um, power steering hose that I bought from O'Reilly's. And just so you know, that is the part number from O'Reilly's that I got that bolts right up. 91744, power steering hose from 1995, Ford F350, four bolt steering box. I've bled the system. And right now, I think it's gonna be all right. That is some dirty power steering fluid that was left in the box. I'm probably gonna have to clean all that out with a steering flush. Looking forward to that, but fun fact, it bolts up, it works, and the grand total for that part at the junkyard was $26. So with that power steering hose I just got from O'Reilly's, that was about $26 as well. So you're looking at a little more than 50 bucks for one ton steering that is a factory unit that bolts into your Bronco, have a nice day, and go buy one.
Bye. All right, so it's wrap-up video time. Uh, final thoughts. The 4-bolt is in the truck, as you can see right there, along with the F350 steering arm. I'm sorry, F350 high-pressure hose. We've also got the Pitman arm from an F350. And uh, down here we got new tie rods and new drag link. And uh, we actually got some new KYB gas adjust shocks. And put them all together and what do you get? Uh, you get a Bronco that you're not afraid to take on the highway. So I got to say, when it's all said and done, if I were to do this again, I'd do it in a heartbeat. For anybody who out there who's thinking about going with a four bolt swap and whether or not it would be worthwhile to do for their old body style pickup, there's nothing that I can say that is bad about this. Um, it works. I will say that the four bolt that came out of the junkyard is definitely from a truck with a lot of miles on it. It is not what you would call sports car tight. However, it is a damn sight better than the stock two bolt that had almost 200,000 miles on it that I pulled out of this thing. I can drive this down the road now and it doesn't feel like the truck is going to decide to change lanes. It feels like I get to decide when to change lanes. It's a wonderful feeling to have. You know, that whole, I'm not going to die every time I drive this thing type of feeling. But um, if I were to do it all over again, I'd do it exactly the same way. And if uh, I could have my way about it, I would uh, take the one I pulled out of the junkyard, bring it to a place that takes a core charge and maybe buy a remanufactured unit. But um, in the words of Ferris Bueller, if you have the means, I highly recommend it. Thanks for watching, guys.